Oyamina, my name is Bully, and ah, dang, not again. I did it again, why am I doing that? What is up, guys? My name is Bully, and welcome to the Food of Chris Now, I know it's uh, been a while since uh, I've done this. Uh, actually, not been a while, uh, sorry. Um, uh, I'm trying to keep myself uh, to focus on it. Um, recently, a lot of uh, quiz hell weeks uh, have been happening a lot, so I'm trying my best to continue where I uh, left off. So, the interval interval between class classes or recess is fundamentally a time for lazing around. You're telling me. Giving a half fast 10 minute break, most people won't be able to put it to any real use. I myself imagined a school life along with those relaxed lines and was looking forward to spending some aimless time right around now. Demo. Uh, wait, 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 wait. What, again? Wait, is it this scene that uh, I saw in vi in YouTube? Um, wait, no, 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 no. Okay, okay, um, I'll be lucky I didn't know any of it. Um, of course, I'm not gonna break a sweat on any attack of you because we're being slashed with a blade exacto knife. Isn't the kind of pleasant breeze I had in mind? Okay, about the voice actor, I was, I was, I was correct on the one who voiced uh, Kuragaya Yoriko, and I forgot the name again. Dang it! Um, hopefully, there's gonna be a text over there. Um, um, I guess she had thought it particularly well timed attack, judging from the shock gaze she's direct, she's directing at me while as she catches her breath. Of course, given that conspicuous clicking sound and her painfully audible footsteps, she might be able. She might as well have been screaming, Here I come, but... Time moves at half speed at, in my immediate... Vicin... Vicinis... Vis, vi, vicinity... Vicinity? Ah. Um, giving a straight answer would be a pain, so I pulled something out my... <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm just going with you. Well, Dad, he can make a fool of you. He has the right to do it. He can do whatever the hell he wants. I mean, I mean, I would, I would, I would fool anyone ever I want. I would posterize anyone who I want. I would beat the fuck out of anyone if I want. Maybe it's just me, but I think trying to stab a classmate is somewhat worse. <laughs> it's reminding me of people die if they're, if they're killed. But saying it's not a crime until you actually get stabbed. What? Okay, um. This woman's copy of the criminal code seems to be missing the page on attempted murder. But judging from the way she momentarily brought my nonsense, she she's unexpectedly airhead. Maybe a bit naive would be a nicer way to put it. I mean, I already remember your face last episode. There's only six of us here. It would be harder to forget. <laughs> Thank you. you it, it just hit me in the head. It makes sense. I mean, he's the only guy in the classroom. Still glaring in my direction, Yumiko retracts the blade of the, her box cutter. And snorting in the splisher, leaves with a fluster of her skirt. Okay. Hopefully I shut this guy up because this guy uh, is like a heavy breathing weeboo who always wanted me to do the Abner route and 
I mean, listen here. I am not doing the Amity route because I don't want to. It's because you're the one who caused me to not to do it. Alright? I'm not... The reason why I'm denying it is because I can. I can deny whatever, anything I want. I could deny a love letter. I could deny a confession. I could even deny some... I don't know, homophobic slurs? I don't know! When I return to the classroom, Aminid strikes up a conversation. I guess the story of the knife assault in question has already spread around the classroom as my problem with Yumiko seems to be known common knowledge. It's not like she's doing me any harm, but I can't say I'm enjoying this. That's it. Wait. Oh, okay. Uh, first encounter, I approached the uh, stubbornly silent Yumiko in a physical sense. Then I press it. Dang it. This again. Um, the outcome was her initial act of rejection. In part, that might be the result of my own heightened wariness. Such is heavy-handed foreshadowing put me on guard, and I have a tendency to not to trust someone I'm meeting for the first time. Um, to not not to trust someone I'm meeting for the first time. Never mind. Um, at the time, while I certainly felt animosity from her, I hope I pronounced that right, it wasn't so intense as to discourage me from approaching. However, from our second encounter on Yuriko bar barred open hostility towards me. What's worse, apparently having to come to the conclusion that she wasn't a match for me barehanded, she's been swinging around a box cutter of all things. Um, according to Amine, it seems that y Yumiko has something of a habit of brandishing retractable knives at people. Of her- <coughs> Sorry. Of course her goal is usually more intimidation than anything else, but speaking as the target this time, I can sense there is a part of her that seriously, that's seriously trying to stab me. It's not the best feeling in the world. I get that feeling, I get the stab uh, feeling there. Really? Um, I'd really prefer to avoid that kind of recognition. Personal space. <sighs> I mean, the personal space uh, in the classroom right now is being shit. Didn't notice. I'm pretty perceptive when my life's in danger, but I don't really feel that level of threat from Yumiko. My master did see I was exceptionally unskilled in that department. At any rate, I want to do something about Yumiko's aggressive rejection of me. From that purpose, I need to talk to someone familiar with her circumstances. Is she the only teacher in the classroom? No, 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 wait. She's the principal. With the attendance book at her hand as usual, our carefully principal appears. I guess Chizuru is the only one as I can speak. In conclusion, Yubiko seems to hate me with a passion. Kun Sakaki, yes, son, aside, I think I understand the reason someone might hate you. Um, if I remember that as Machi, um, ho! Oh, let's hear it.
I only said what I was thinking. Was I wrong? <laughs> More or less. Okay, um, got it. Indifference to your feelings, no matter how much I think of... Think you're lazing around, I'll keep it quietly buried in my... Or from now on, good enough? Um... What do you want from me? Spare me your vo vague complaints. What's your... What's your pleasure? Do you have an idea? The principal... Cup in hand, lowers herself across from the sofa I'm reclining on. Oh, wait, Sakaka so Yumiko- Oh my god, I'm so stupid! Okay. I can't believe I'm this stupid. Alright. Um, hang on, I have to get rid of something real quick. Um, Alright, it's gone. Um, this place so just opened recently, right? I see. What does that have to do with her rejecting me? Before responding to my question, she takes a sip of coffee from the cup in her hand. Hold on, are you telling me that the school is in her territory? Frightening? I get it. She doesn't want a harm to happen. I mean, speaking of that, um, someone has to define harem in the classroom, in the middle of the class, because, I mean, the teacher obviously know heard about anime and she wanted to talk uh, a few people about it, and they. Why would they suggest these stupid things? Why would they suggest High School DxD? Why would they suggest Kiss Exist? I mean, obviously there's gonna be some feminism involved with that because of, you know, the views that, uh, how they get their attention on the fans. <sighs> I'm not sure if I could watch High School DxD or even Kiss Exist because of the popularity, how they get popular. Um, I mean, I am not an elitist, okay? I I just I just don't like fan service, all right? I believe too much fan service is make is kind of ruining anime. I believe. Anyway, Principal Tachibana takes her pen in her empty hand and jabs it towards me to emphasize her point. She wanted to make a main focus of Sojo school and not a ha Sojo genre and not a harem genre. Is that what she's doing? Hazing, is it? A bit of bullying comes with being a first recruit, but I didn't expect the same here. Apparently unconvinced by the idea of Sakaki stealing my lunch money, Principal Tajibana hides a snort of laughter behind her hand. Although it's certainly an amusing considering the balance of our physical strength. I don't see how I can manage a decent student life at this rate. I'm honored to have a provide... Hang on. Ah. <coughs> 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 I'm honored to have provided a moment of amusement for our perpetually, perpetually overworked principal, but I came here hoping to have a path towards ov overcoming this challenge illuminated by your educational guidance. <sighs> ok, 
Okay, um, cranky from beginning to end. Ultimately, the principal didn't provide me with any useful advice. This is what school is like, so figure it out yourself. A normal school life means a few problems, like this. You mean like filling grades? <laughs> um, I do have to admit, she managed to dodge the issue reasonably well with that last line. In any case, since she didn't have any clear answer for me, I am left with no choice but to do as she says and try to work on this over time. It's not really my style to go with the flow like this, but if that's the proposal of my educational guy, there's no helping it. Really? Again? Yup. I'm not gonna lie, it does. Um, is Mitri gonna say anything? Because uh, I realize he didn't show up until this one. Um, um, as we sort of going with the flow, Yumiko attacks have been continuing without any particular change to date. Kora, <sighs> Wait, 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 don't, don't, don't tell me! A moment thrown off by the sudden side step, Yumiko staggers forward unsteadily. She tries desperately to regain her balance, resulting in a Ridiculous pose in stark contrast with virtual haughty demeanor. Nature lets out an involuntary giggle to at the speculate. She is instantly pierced by Yumiko's furious glare. Ignoring Mitsuru as she cowers behind her desk, Yumiko storms out of the classroom in a towering range. Let me guess, she flashed out her pants in accident. You're telling me, Sachi. You mean like the Luigi dead stare thing or my dead stare? that I'm usually doing to my classmates right now since that's getting popular other than the rejection thing. Scenes like this were usually familiar by now, with the exception of Mitchell, well, everyone seems perfectly calm. Even with this little scene doesn't bother them, as a directly concerned party is problematic. Nah, I'm gonna... Um... <coughs> 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 In response to my call, she points herself with her index finger, silently asking, Whoa? Wait. When I nod, she approaches in her unusual, pointlessly sexy way. She just wants attention! I forgot the lyrics. All I know, I know, that's the only part I know. Just want to touch it and you know what my heart. Um, would you want that sort of. <laughs> Yo, wait. This is not good. I gotta move. I gotta move. Hang on. I gotta move. 
I gotta move. Sorry. This doesn't look like a safe place to... Sorry, my laptop is... I know if they open the door, they're gonna say something stupid. Um... <laughs> um... Uh, <laughs> um... Would you want that sort of sex worker style treatment? I'll be sure to keep that offer in mind, but that's not what I need today. You've known her, Yumiko, for a long time, right? How to, how to do that. <coughs> um, any ideas about the reason she's rejecting me at this intensely? Practical? So Certainly Yumiko hardly seems the type to open up and reveal herself to someone just because they've known each other for a while. I guess I'll, f I'll have to find a solution for myself after all. Thanks anyway, let me know if anything comes to, to mind. With those words I move to exit the classroom and let me get Yumiko's there. If Yumiko's rejection continues to take this form I'll have no choice but to ask the principal's advice again. Which I'm afraid it might not work again. At the moment I open the door and prepare to leave. Because of the harem? I stop at the sound of Amina's voice. Hmm? She's saying the same thing as the principal, huh? Does that... Does it feel the way... This... Wait, wait, sorry. Dang it, I'm not reading it right. Does it feel that way to you as well, Lamine? This is a little hard to take that seriously given the flow of this conversation. As if that could happen. <clears throat> I returned to the dorm and wandered the hallways without any particular objective. Compared to shutting myself alone in my room, it's easier to gather my thoughts. One of the group, huh? I recall Avenue's parting words. It's easy for her to say, but actually getting that kind that island of a human being to recognize me as a friend seems to next to impossible. First of all, we're not even speaking on speaking terms yet. The sun is sticking down it by below the window frame, casting shadows along the hall. But I don't know if I said that thing in Japanese right, I'm not sure. About time for me to return to my room. I guess I try talking to her tomorrow, which I believe is not gonna work also. Um, I scratch my head as I turn towards my bedroom. The sound of my slippers echoes roughly in the hallway. Yumiko might have her own set of internal roles since she hasn't tried to attack me even once in a while inside the dorm. It's not that I was particularly off my guard as the result of that assumption. Rather, it was probably because it happened at this particular time of day. Or so I would reflect my to myself later. Evening, a hallway in the dormitory lit by the setting sun. The f at the flash of dressing life, I react in instinctively. I grab her arm firmly. With her arm captured, Yumiko's face stiffens. The box cutter blade still extended, rattles around her feet. 
<laughs> Turning in circles around the handle. Trying for an element of surprise. Yeah, because expansion changes from shock to fear. That's what tips me off that I am not wearing any peaceful face. So it was something I couldn't hold back. I didn't want to find her. I thought I could play another song, but I wanted to convince myself that I could. Kora, Yumiko. Still gripping her arm, I took her eyes and speak. I'm not your enemy. Yumiko's expression betrays her only just for a moment, but this is as quickly she sells back to her customary mask. But it doesn't look like you're convinced of that yet, so let me say one thing. Releasing her arm and pick up the box cutter, lying in front of her feet. Carefully retracting the blade, I hold it out to you ago. I won't touch your arm, I won't. <coughs> and I won't pry into your business either. That's a promise, so stop this, it's pointless. Observe me and reach your conclusions. If I'm lying, you can always try stabbing me again. Stumbling Yumiko retreats with a single step. Jana. Turning around, I return to my room. Normally, Yumiko would seize such a chance of attack, but something's different now. Her elongated shadow is still in the hallway, silent except for the small hound of her breathing. After that day, Yumiko's attacks came to an abrupt halt. The scenes of sudden violence disappeared from our classrooms and hallways. Although I am in a bar, 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 bar me with questions about the abrupt change, it wasn't really something I could talk about. I vaguely deflected her interest. If I can use this as an opportunity to slightly improve my relationship with Sakaki, it's very welcome from the perspective of my normal campus life. You. It's usual I call Yumiko's. To call Yumiko's behavior when we came across each other. Kurt. Kurt? Would be an understatement. <coughs> By, but at the very least, judging from the clear, clearly different way she's looking at me, she's her observation period seems to be ongoing. Unless about my weakness, I'll answer. <laughs> How did he guess that? That's just saying, come up with something else. She occasionally talks to me like this, but instead of friendly chats about lunch plans, we have to investigate inquiries and careful negotiations. Oh, ding it wrong button. Um, even so, I suppose it's a considerable improvement over outright bloodshed. This is fruit of Grisaya, not Troy. Alright. Speaking of Troy, um I was watching that in class. Um I mean everyone in class was watching it and everyone's reaction was like <laughs> You know <laughs> You know <sighs> females. Um Is that your idea of social interaction between classmates? Alright, I get it, I get it. Right then. I open my hands in exaggerated American style shrug. Well, good luck to you, Yumiko. <clears throat> I think it's time to leave before she starts popping any further. She seems like she's hung up on that point. After those events, I've been intentionally addressing Yumiko by her first name. 
The family name would. I got. Ah, oh, God. Hopefully that. <coughs> no, it does not get rid of it yet. Um, a family name would actually be more appropriate here, but I've got a bit of a reason for doing this. Says the one who's never referred to me as anything but you. <coughs> hmm, so you're saying as classmates we should both use last names? Yeah, because the expression clearly reads all crap. Oh, <laughs> you got it! Isn't that starting to point out for building a cordial. cordial. I'm not sure if that's correct. cordial relationship. No, it's cordial. No, cordial. No, 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 no. I, I, I couldn't tell. Um. Alright, in that case, I'll take a fetch next level by pointing out in specific things. You can do the same for. Okay, it might be a little too early for that. I suppose. I propose starting with last names. <laughs> Yuriko hesitated briefly. Before long, she opens her mouth in a tight voice. What the fuck is Gazami? Um, after speaking with those words, she can't with a smile and starts off. Yeah, better go to Thus, the great hardship I finally succeeded in establishing. An absolute min minimum level of communication with my fifth classmate. Seems the student life is thing is pretty rough on its own way. It's telling me. When I push open the heavy glass doors, I found the lobby in our silence. Exchanging my outdoor used shoes and slippers in my room, I reached for the board hanging above, shoe wax, and flipped the magnetic tag. Names are reading Katsami Yuji from out to in. A glance at the other name tag reveals Saki, Sachi, and Amane are all in, but there's no one in the lobby. They're probably shop in their rooms doing homework. Shoto. There isn't any homework assigned today, which would mean my hypothesis. Just now can't be accurate. Kora Sodin Nani. When should students shut themselves up in their rooms, homework and <laughs> Are you serious? I'm so lucky that I changed my position. Um Although I gave the matter a little thought, I don't plan on going around and confirming my new conjecture. It's just a guess that no matter what sort of vile filth they're going getting off to, that's their per prerogative. In this case, pretending not to notice would be a kinder thing. Having reached that conclusion, I reached out to my door, my of my room, but in doing so, I noticed a bit of tape stuck on my door as a seal has been ripped off. Someone's in the room. Wait, wait, backing away from the door for a moment, I quietly pressed my ear against the wall, but I can't hear any noises from inside. It didn't seem like a typhoon is laying waste to the room in my absence, but either way. If it's someone stupid enough to miss the tape, no need to be careful. I forcefully stream the door, open the door to my room. <gasps> Why? Why? Oh my... Are you serious? Ah! Uh, what are you doing there? You call me a... Stripper, it's not my birthday. You got the wrong room. <laughs> what? It's just summoning. Why are you in my room? 
You're in the wrong room, I'm in it. I'm in it points to a large overnight bag laying in on the floor, presumably containing her spare clothes. Why are you naked? You've got your own room, right? When I was a great stooler, I had friends who throw their bags by the door after school so they could get back outside faster. I guess her brain works on the same level. Um, fine, I suppose. I'll call me whether you invite me or not, it's my room. I walk into the room, hold a glass of under the force and use a sink and fill it with the tap water. Hmm, Nani. I swig down the TV water from the glass. Actually, what? Your sentence is missing both a verb and an object. And how is she not? I'm not a normal man and you and you were the one who barged into my room. If you don't want to be seen how about how about being frank about it and telling me how to, telling me to get out? Oh my god. Are you s want me to stick a 20 on Oh no! If you say so, you you seem pretty used to this. If you didn't want to be seen, you should have said so from the start. I'll be outside. Call me when you're done. <laughs> What a troublesome moment. What do you want from me? Um. That's a new from play. I think I'm gonna sing. I can buy one of them for a moment. Bring it to my room and please destroy it. I'm not saying anything. Nani. This is probably the reason why I'm not uploading the third episode. Um, uh, I did have one. Shinderu. It's been years, not a problem. <sighs> Nani. Kaski. I know. Kind of a weird name for a girl. It's actually written with the characters of one and princess. What do you ask? Soka. My sister is the topic I prefer to avoid as much as possible. Not because it's too painful to remember her death or anything sentimental like that. I just don't want to get in heavy mood for no good reason. Maybe I'm gonna pick up on my reaction since she doesn't want to act, ask anything else about the subject. Although she's a troublesome, selfish woman, I can honestly appreciate that part of her. <coughs> I wasn't really, really waiting. What about your tits or about your clothes? Hmm? Now that I look, I'm mean, wearing a pointlessly skimpy outfit. Even if it's summer, it's a bit over the top. Too much exposure, you're. A waste of resources? Uh, 
this woman is trying to disrupt the economy of the shopping district via her tits. Okay, um. Look. I downloaded a game called Negligi and it has the uncensored patch. And I'm so lucky that I changed the position where my laptop is. Because if it wasn't for that, I would be in trouble. I recorded that and I realized that is a mistake. So I'm so lucky that I never did a gaming video of that. Nothing at all. If you're done, hurry up and go. The dirty old man at the shopping district are clotting in her 20s in anticipation. As she speaks, somebody grabs my arm like a buzzer patrol agent seizing in an illegal immigrant from Mexico. Why are you trying to pull? Get off. Why do I have to come? You can tell from his physique, do you? If if you don't walk me into this with that huge body, ten kilos shouldn't be an issue. Or so I thought, but content cautiously didn't put into words. We are dealing with a woman here. Technically speaking. In the first place she's only large. Poor woman, I'm five or six centimeters taller. That scared the crap out of me. Um, I guess I'm gonna just gotten sick of me staring at her silently as she jerks me closer by the arm she's grasping. I can probably see why this guy is annoying me to do the Amane route. The fan service. <laughs> Screw the fan service. I don't remember asking to see her breast. This woman's logic is completely incoherent. Maybe it's just me, but isn't this roughly irrelevant to the way the Gestapo would abruptly That is a s oh YouTube, please spare me. Um, if you think a flash of your will come make any man do your bidding, you've got another thing coming. Probably no. Um, when you've got a mistake like that, I think it's probably inevitable. As she speaks, I'm gonna enter, entwines herself around my arm, pushing me, uh, pushing her. Face. <laughs> Shotgun wedding? Um, the fact that I'm. I just spent a good second thinking about anti helicopter mines is frankly completely ridiculous. But the world has been seeming, seeming like an extremely ridiculous place recently. No point getting too down on myself. Fine, you just need me to carry the rice, right? I've heard it's better not to be loved by a god or big woman if you want a long life. Whoa! Oh my. 
Just a joke. Ah, come on. Let's get going already. Let go of my arm. I don't need you to clean all over me. It's it's thrilling. Don't press your nose against me and stuff while you're not a dog. Honestly, carrying some rice isn't really that big of a deal, but I might agree to the stars save myself the effort of resistance. It's easy to see she'd take me that as a license to push increasingly unreasonable requests on me. Like asking for free food. If you're smart, start rejecting people's requests at 80% of your real tolerance level. Good advice, good advice. Um, I think this is the best way to stop. <laughs> Yo, okay, um, freaking help. Um, all right. Hope you guys uh, enjoy this video. Um, oh man, I have I'm gonna enjoy my time editing this video. <laughs> I can tell from that. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and um, see you guys later.